What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports. You're watching our college football channel. It's time to look at the Pac-12 and see which teams were overrated or underrated from this past season based off of their record in one score games. And really this is maybe a, a better way to look at uh, which teams were better or worse than their record. And again, this can tell us a lot about next year, the teams that are maybe being overhyped a little bit going into next year or teams that are going to be under the radar going into next year. Again, a lot of information you can gather from uh, looking at how these teams performed in one score games and how that could have potentially affected their record if it had been different. If you look at 2021, what can we take away from this? Well, Oregon was really good in one score games. That will tell you maybe they were overrated, expect a bit of a drop off. They dropped a little bit to nine and three. Uh, Cal was 0-5, but they did not turn things around. They were they struggled again, once again this year in one-score games. And then Washington was 3-5, and five, so you can look at that and say that, hey, Washington was probably underrated. They were better than that 4-8 and eight record, and maybe they'll be better. And they were a lot better. So you can definitely take some away from that. Uh, looking at the other teams, Utah was 0-2, telling you maybe they were better than their record. And they had a, a similar season, 9-3 and three this year. And then there's Arizona at the bottom, one and four, telling us that uh, maybe we could watch out for Arizona to have a better year this year, and they did. So not a ton of these big numbers here in the Pac-12, but I think the ones that are here, you can take a little bit away from that, uh, but not a ton. So let's get to 2022. Take a look at the top six teams in the Pac-12, USC, Washington, Oregon, Utah, Oregon State, and UCLA. How did these teams perform in one score games? Well, USC was 4-1 and one and Washington was 3-1. and one. That right there tells you why these teams finished at the top, at least record-wise. Of course, Utah went to the Pac-12 championship and won it. But record-wise, they had the best records this season. And with so, many, so much parity in this conference, really that's what it was all about. You had to win some close games. The teams that did that would have the best records. Oregon and Utah both 2-2. Two and two. Oregon State 3-2. and two. UCLA 2-2. Two and two. If these teams had won all of their one-score games, I mean, take a look. All six of these teams were very close to having great seasons. I'm talking about playoff caliber seasons. Even Oregon State, even UCLA. USC could have been 12-0. Washington, Oregon, Utah, Oregon State, UCLA. All of these teams could have been 11-1 if they had won their one-score game. So very, very close. Washington was only get one game away from being right there with a chance. Think about this. If Washington doesn't lose to Arizona State, that Washington-USC game in the Pac-12 championship is pretty much a game with, to decide a playoff spot. The winner of that game would have probably gone to the college football playoff. But that one game, that one one-score game really cost Washington. But look at the flip side of this. What if these teams had lost all of their one-possession games? You see USC, Washington, all, Oregon, Utah, all these teams would have been 7-5. and five. Oregon State would have been 6-6. Six and six. UCLA also would have been 7-5. and five. So it could have very easily been a much different season for all six of these teams. Could have been right there in the college football playoff conversation or could have been a very average year. But for the most part, these teams pretty much split their one score games except for USC and Washington. And again, that's why they finished with the best records in this conference. So if the teams had split their one score games, you see, again, just a ton of parity. Uh, USC would have been 10 and two. So they would have dropped a little bit. And then you look at, and technically USC, I think would have been 9.5 and 2.5, but we're just rounding that up to, to what's closest to the actual records for the teams this year, just how I've been doing it, uh, just to give you an actual record. Washington, Oregon, Utah, Oregon State, UCLA, all of these teams would have been nine and three. And it just shows you how tight this division was, how close it was. Any of these six teams could have made it, and I say division, uh, there are no divisions in the Pac-12 this year, but it shows you how any of these six teams could have made it to the Pac-12 championship. And then, you know, we had a very, very tight race. We had ties in there and it was very close. But uh, Washington, even though they had the best overall record or second best overall record, that did not get them into the Pac-12 championship. Um, you know, Oregon, Utah, both lost non-conference games. So that that's why their records where, are where they are. And uh, Utah won the tiebreaker. They got into the Pac-12 championship. So let's go now to the bottom six teams. You see Washington State, Arizona, Cal, Arizona State, Stanford, and Colorado 
Now these teams, you see Washington State was 2-2 two and two in one-score games. And there's Arizona, 3-1. and one. So remember last year, they struggled in one-score games. This year, they flipped that around. They went 3-1. and one. And that's how it happens a lot of times. The teams that lose a lot of close games one year will win a lot of close games the next year. For Cal, it was, again, a struggle for them to win close games. They were just 2-5. and five. Arizona State 2-2, two two, Stanford 2-2, two two, Colorado 1-1. One one. If this, these teams had won all of their one-score games, uh, Washington State could have been 9-3, and three, so they could have been right up there with those top six teams. Arizona would have been 6-6, six and six, could have made it to a bowl game. Cal could have been 9-3. and three. So, again, you see this two years in a row for Cal. Depending on what the roster looks like, they could be a team to watch out for next year to really have a big bounce back. Arizona State, 5-7, and seven, still would have made a bowl game. Same thing for Stanford and Colorado. I mean, their best-case scenario was 2-10. and 10. I think it's going to be much different next year with Deion Sanders as their head coach. I think this this is this team's going to definitely turn around. And that's why you can't just look at this. There are so many factors that go into you know predicting the next season. So if these teams had lost all of their one-score games, you can see some really bad records here. Washington State would have not made it to a bowl game. Arizona and Cal would have been just 2-10. and 10. Arizona State and Stanford would have been just 1-11. and 11. And Colorado would have been 0-12. So there was a clear, I mean a clear difference in the top six teams and the bottom six teams in the Pac-12. You could maybe put Washington State in the middle. They weren't really in that top tier or in the bottom tier. But the top six, the bottom five, I mean, there was a, a clear-cut difference in the Pac-12. And that top six was really competitive, like I said. If these teams had split their one-score games, Washington State still would have been 7-5. and five. Arizona would have dropped to 4-8. and eight. Cal would have been 5-7. and seven. So based on this, Cal would have actually been ahead of Arizona. And then you'd have Arizona State and Stanford at 3-9, and nine, which was their record, and Colorado 1-11, and 11, which was their record as well. So how much can we take away from this? We'll see. Um, it means maybe USC, maybe Washington will drop off just a little bit next year or will be a little overhyped. Cal, maybe a team that comes in under the radar. Maybe they'll be better than expected next year. Or maybe it won't work out that way. Again, it doesn't always. But I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more here on the SG1 Sports College Football Channel.